So tonight I'm joined with Paolo Colombo, the curator and artist. So a few things about Paolo. He has been the art advisor of Istanbul Modern uh, since 2008. He has co-curated and he is co-curating the Iraq Pavilion for the 2019 and 2017 Venice Biennale. He was the curator of the sixth Istanbul Biennial, a curator for the second Mardin Biennial, and for the third Thessaloniki Biennial. So from 2001 to 2007, he was a curator at the Maxi in Rome for quite a few years, as well as the director of the Center of Contemporary Art in Geneva. So amongst his uh, exhibitions are, I'll just name a few, Rosemary Trockel, uh, Francis Alice, Kara Walker, uh, Ugo Rondinone, Kiki Smith, Robert Gobert, and many more. So as an artist, he has uh, presented solo shows in Los Angeles and London, and he's been uh, the associate producer of a number of award-winning films, including The Age of Heaven and Soul Kitchen by Fatih Hakim, and The, and the Tree by Julie Bertuccelli. And thank you so much, Paolo, for thank joining you. us. Introduction. Joining us tonight. <laughs> and of course, we are very honored to have here with us uh, Gilsun Karamustafa, uh, whose solo show, as I said, is opening later on tonight, which, of course, is certainly not the first time uh, that Gilsun is showing work in Greece. As she was commu commissioned the work, The Apartment Building, I'm sure most of you know the work, uh, by EMST in 2012, and, and this work was also part of the EMST collection for uh, Documenta 14 uh, presented in Castle. Also, she was invited by the Thessaloniki Biennale of Contemporary Art curated by Adelina von Furstenberg in 2013, and also showed as part of the Grand Promenade exhibition curated by Anna Cafetzi at the Melina Mercuri Foundation. Apart from the Greek <laughs> presentation of Gülsun, so she was born in Turkey where she lives, she graduated from the Istanbul State Fine Arts Academy, and she has participated in many international biennials, I'll just name again a few, three editions of the Istanbul Biennial, Sao Paulo, Guangzhou, Cairo, Singapore, Kiev Biennial, and the Saloniki Biennial. Her works are included in some major collections such as the National Gallery Hamburger Bahnhof in Berlin, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, the Guggenheim, the Tate Modern, Istanbul Modern, amongst others. I'm also very happy that we have here tonight on the occasion of this solo show Yul Soon's representative, Ezra Sari Gedek, with whom we've been working very closely on the realization of the show. And thank you, Ezra, for all the support and for being here. And of course, we wouldn't be able to be here without the kind collaboration of the Benaki Museum. So I'd like to thank them as well, Mr. McGuinness and Mrs. Zobanoglu, for the support. And so now in terms of how this is going to roll, uh, we'll have approximately an hour for this discussion. And at the end, we'll have some time for some Q&As if you have any questions. And after that, of course, you're all welcome to attend the solo show, The Peculiar Song by Gilsun Karamustafa. So that's all from me. The floor is yours. Thank you again for being here. It's such a pleasure. There's so much to say. Let me just give you a little bit of a framework of uh, uh, how I know Gilsun and how long uh, we've known each other. It's been a substantial amount of time, uh, since 1998. Um, um, she was uh, in the committee that hired me to do the Isimu Biennial. She was the artist's representative, and I've been thankful ever since. And um, so it's a great pleasure to be able to uh, talk with you today uh, in a very public way. I mean, we've talked in many more, more ways, private ways. We've seen each other in Istanbul when I go. Uh, I don't think we ever worked together for some reason. Uh, yeah, it, I don't think we worked, yeah, but you know, it is a, an impression that I've worked you, with you several times. You know, Likewise. it's like that. Likewise. Yeah, because we, we met so we many met. times. Yeah. But I, I will um, be, think, we, we, as the images roll, you have an idea roughly of her work, and there's a number of them. We'll probably speak about five or six of them. But um, I would like to speak about the beginning, and uh, um, I would like 
good soon to tell us why so many children figure in her <laughs> work. And sometimes herself um, photograph, I think if I remember the, the PowerPoint correctly, there is a picture, an image of her saying goodbye from a train. Yes. It's in here. Yes. It's a wonderful piece. So I think, uh, I think uh, yes, tell us about the importance of childhood <coughs> and of a sense of identity related to your work about uh, <coughs> Yes, Paolo, you're starting from a very good point, I think, you know. Because, yes, there are so many figures, children figure, the children uh, coming and going out in my work. Probably you have seen one, the street children playing on the streets of Istanbul, uh, who were play, doing music and afterwards going back, you know, if they were not begging, but, you know, contributing to the life of uh, Istanbul for once. Uh, actually, yes, I uh, refer to my childhood. I love to work about children uh, in my works. Uh, I, ha I think that this innocence and the, uh, the reference uh, of the children are so important in our lives. And uh, to talk about something, actually I call myself an artist who really tells stories, uh, to talk about something, to use this image and build the work around it, really sometimes comforts me. Uh, actually, sometimes I have had some critique uh, about abusing the child figure, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. why are you using, you know, uh, uh, as you do, it, uh, they take it as a center of interest mm -hmm. and ask me this, this question. But it's not like that, you know, it's never an abuse. First of all, I use my own photographs mm -hmm. uh, as a starting point. Uh, I have works where I definitely used my photographs and, you know, as I did uh, with these uh, photographs in the collages mm -hmm. in the uh, exhibition, uh, one work was like the smallest photograph mm -hmm. I had, mm -hmm. which was shot by my father, mm -hmm. and then I built uh, the monument and the child mm -hmm. around it, because, you know, that was about a childhood which has passed in a city where, uh, which was built by the Germans, I'm talking about Ankara, and uh, within those colossal big architecture and also the colossal uh, sculptures, mm -hmm. my childhood has passed. So <coughs> this photograph was very bizarre when I really confronted mm -hmm. it, because this photograph was totally talking about uh, about a child under this colossal uh, sculpture mm -hmm. and I began to think about this feeling mm -hmm. and I began to talk about, uh, think about my situation uh, uh, in this uh, position mm -hmm. and this work totally came out from of it. it. Now we're seeing another child uh, story. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, the hotel room. Yes. Uh, yes, there is a child in there also. Yeah. yeah. But it is also talking about a crucial moment in life because there is this, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to talk about those women uh, after the uh, fall of the wall and after the re uh, change of regimes mm -hmm. in Russia uh, and other uh, mm -hmm. Soviet countries their flow into Istanbul and women coming with their child, children, but at the same time they have to do a little prostitution mm -hmm. and so on. And you know, this uh, a moment of uh, uh, unfortunate moment in their lives, not knowing what to mm -hmm. do with the child, mm -hmm. not knowing with the life itself. So I think they really speak about something which of course, important. you know the fragility of yeah. <coughs> fragility of society and fragility of of uh, children, yes. or, or, and yes. also the weakest um, parts of society. Uh, I still 
uh, have a few questions that are related. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, the picture of uh, uh, you um, pushing a monument uh, yes, was, uh, was done in Ankara. Yeah, yeah. But uh, in a way, your city is Istanbul. Yes. In, in some yes. strange way. Yes. And, and, but I just would like to um, cover a little uh, uh, background. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in, in, yes. in Turkish yes. history. Um, the um, Ankara was built, yes, as you say, yes. uh, as, a, as a powerful capital yes. uh, with great avenues, and we all know the great avenues are made to make great armies mm -hmm. to parade. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, it is something, I'm not saying artificial, mm -hmm. uh, but thoughtfully thought out. It's, it has to be in the center of the country. Mm -hmm. The country is no longer an empire, but it is a, a republic. Mm -hmm. So the people are no longer subjects, but they're citizens with all what this means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, that they lose their uh, identity, ethnic identity, to assume the identity of Turkish yeah. um, people. Uh, this said, uh, if the, the sculptures were probably, the ones you're trying to push, uh, were, were, were uh, not the first figurative sculptures. Mm -hmm. But as you see, you will see images of the city of Istanbul postcards. And at one point you see Taksim Square. And, and if, I, if I understand correctly, mm -hmm. um, the uh, this statue of Atatürk mm -hmm. in Taksim mm -hmm. Square mm -hmm. is the first public figurative statue yes. in the whole of Turkey. Yes. That's 1932, yes. right? Yes, So, um, when you were a child pushing these uh, sculptures, you were pushing something that was very new. Yes, <laughs> yes, of course. And, of and course. Uh, uh, somehow you were uh, a, a young child in a republic mm -hmm. um, that still had its heart and its center, I mm -hmm. mean, uh, uh, in Istanbul. Yeah. So, Istanbul is infinitely important for you, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. would like to know um, a little bit of how you saw the city change uh, yeah. From, yeah. from the 60s <coughs> yeah. onwards. First of all, of course, I have to talk about, welcome, uh, I have to talk about uh, a little bit of my background, you yes. know. Uh, uh, my father is a journalist was a journalist and a, a radio person. Actually, uh, the family is from Istanbul for generations, but uh, as a new city, as you mm -hmm. say, Ankara began to be built. Mm -hmm. Actually, Ankara is a built-up city, mm -hmm. a new city. Mm -hmm. uh, for that, everybody, you know, very talented people, you know, artists, uh, everyone, mm -hmm was called by Atatürk to settle down in Ankara and create a new uh, cultural revolution mm -hmm. there. And uh, actually my father was called uh, when Ankara Rest Radio was established to work there and to continue there uh, from Istanbul. So I was born in Ankara, but you know, as the family was in Istanbul, it was, uh, uh, oh, I, we were always, as a family, commuting between Ankara and Istanbul. Uh, actually, I owe so much to this. As you said in the beginning, the work with the train window, mm -hmm. which was very significant because, you know, uh, Atatürk was very proud of those uh, train window uh, photographs, and he was usually going and taking some photographs. There are a series of photographs mm -hmm. by him uh, taken at a train window. Uh, and also when I found this photograph of mm -hmm. mine in the train win window, I was really happy to turn it into a work. But the real meaning of it was, you know, we were always commuting, you know, from Ankara to Istanbul, like going and coming back. 
Of course, for a child, you know, uh, as I have told you that uh, this colossal feeling of Ankara, uh, for example, there is a park in the middle of Ankara. Now it seems very small, but by that time it was very big. Uh, it was, uh, uh, the, the uh, city center was designed by uh, Austrian uh, architect Holzmeister, and the, uh, the uh, sculpture was made by Hanak, the Austrian sculpture Hanak built the uh, colossal sculpture. And when it was not finished, well, uh, he died in the middle of construction, he, they called Thorak, Josef Thorak, who was the sculptor of Hitler, to come and finish this sculpture. Ankara was such a, 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 a city that, you know, everything, uh, those professors and everyone who were flying away the fascism of Europe, mm -hmm. they were just being pushed into Ankara, and everything was built newly. So, spending your ch ch childhood in this city, but commuting between Istanbul and Ankara at the same time, for a child it was such a wonderful thing because I had this comparison in my mind. Istanbul was something altogether different with, with its lifestyle, with its set, but Ankara was something uh, imposed, mm -hmm. you know, to, to the people of Turkey because, you know, the capital had to be moved from this very old city with all these complications to a fresh and new city. So whatever you, you mention with these photographs, with the childhood, and mm -hmm. with, with all this memory mm -hmm. I have, mm -hmm. it is all based on this cultural background mm -hmm. of mine, I can yeah. say. Because it, your work does have infinite amounts to do with um, identity. And, and memory and yeah. experience. And, and uh, I think it was somewhere along the way you might have seen a circle of frames that uh, have some magazines. And if I, it's yeah. a piece called Radio Haftes, uh, 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 Radio Week, Radio uh, which was in yeah. fact the magazine uh, where uh, Gülsen's father used to write. And what appears to be like a formal choice of um, magazine covers put in a circle which you cannot really enter um, is in fact what ties all these magazines is that they have inside articles that her father wrote. So what appears to be uh, 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 an aesthetic choice, which I'm sure it's part of the work, at least in the way they're disposed and in the number of them, um, is rooted in an emotional uh, 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 framework in, yeah. in, a, uh, in, in a game of memory. Basically, yeah. you, you're uh, bringing about alive um, the considerations that your father had about uh, life, politics, and radio. Yeah. Am I Yes, you're very right. Correct. <laughs> very right. And maybe uh, at this point, I may speak about some uh, political uh, situations that, you know, unstable political situations of Turkey, uh, about a memory again. But, you know, it is not concealing. This work is not concealing what is inside. You know, what you can see is only the magazine covers of, the mag uh, of those time. But, you know, if you want to read it, you can see the lifestyles, mm -hmm. you can see the faces of these singers. Uh, and, you know, actually, I have another memory, of course, because I know them all from the radio, mm -hmm. because I've grown in this atmosphere of the radio. Mm -hmm. So this work is very personal, but at the same time, for me, uh, it is a very important memory work. If, if I may just uh, try to put it in, in, into a Greek context, it's probably similar, maybe you know, at a different level, but similar to what the Romanzo used to be. 
uh, you know, the magazines which you have, uh, the, the popular information. Yeah. These are magazines were followed by many people and uh, were uh, uh, a popular voice uh, that could give political information or social information outside of uh, uh, p potentially targeted uh, publications because uh, the story, the history of a uh, free press in Turkey yeah. is, is uh, fraught with uh, many obstacles. And I yeah. think a popular magazine like this that dealt with something so uh, had really a meaning mm -hmm. within, in, in the life of, of uh, um, the people. Of the people, and yes. Staying on the subject of memory, mm -hmm. um, I think we, it's not such a big leap, but it's a, a necessary leap to make. Uh, the talk to talk about the wonderful piece that you made in. Uh, 2012, I think it's, uh, which is uh, the apartment building, mm. uh, which is now, if I'm uh, correct, uh, correct, in the collection of Ems, yeah. and uh, um, that details uh, the memory of uh, of uh, the people who lived in the house. Who I think are still your friends. Yes. And, and if I yes. am correct, I met. Um, a, a, probably a younger generation of uh, uh, Vazamatsu's family uh, last night with yes. you, am I correct? Yes. Yes. So can you please kindly tell both the story of the piece and yes. also how it ended up in Athens and um, we're incredibly happy to have it here yes. and I hope you see it in, yeah, yeah. In, if you, when, you see, when you see why. when you see I, a, I think this is a good way of seeing when you see a, a building um, <laughs> um, it's, it's a building uh, that by itself tells the infinite amount of stories. Yeah. And if I may just allow me, because I, I, uh, I like to talk about uh, other things sometimes, I'll just make a little digression. Yeah. If, uh, I'm wondering if any of you has ever seen a movie called The Yakubian Building. It's an Arab movie, an Egyptian movie about a building. I see somebody, an artist, who says, uh, <laughs> who says they've seen it. And um, it's, uh, I encourage everybody to see it. Uh, it is about the life in a building in Cairo. Uh, it's from a very famous novel, uh, Arab novel. And it's on YouTube, two hours and 20 minutes of it, uh, with English subtitles. Oh, I should see you know, you're going to have fun. Have uh, but, 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 but again, um, I'm not using it just to talk about the building, but to indicate how uh, <coughs> houses have a life, Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and they have eyes, they have uh, stories to tell, and you tell us these stories, and it, it is a significant uh, uh, subject uh, of art and literature. So tell us about this subject, yes. tell us about this piece, and tell us yeah. about Athens. Yeah. Well, I'm very proud that those uh, who really gave life to this work, the apartment building, are here with us. Uh, I was, in 2012, I was invited by Anna Capetzi to, uh, to make a work for Emst, because they had uh, a, a, a small commission for making one work every year uh, for, for the uh, museum. So I, of course, took it uh, as a wonderful proposal, and I began to think over it. Well, uh, I had one idea from a very long time, because I had, been, I had experienced something which was very important in my life. Uh, so uh, I was thinking of doing something with it, but I never knew that it would come to life this soon, you know. Uh, in 1999, I moved to Jihangir. And uh, Jihangir is a district uh, near the center of uh, European side of uh, Istanbul, near Taksim. Uh, and, you know, it has a sad story because, you know, uh, this district was mainly uh, the Greek district of Istanbul. But after the pogrom in 1955, many of them left. Uh, there were few uh, who were still living when we moved there, 
but later they died or you know something uh, you know they wanted to move or anything of that sort so now Jihangir is bare no Greeks are living there uh, but as sensitive uh, citizens uh, of Istanbul we always take care of the history of the neighborhood and the buildings that we share in Istanbul. You know, it is such a thing that, you know, uh, when you want to live in an apartment, whether you hire it or whether you buy it, you know, we know that there is a history underneath. And uh, when we decided to uh, have this flat for us, which was very convenient because we, we were not able to buy something very, uh, you know, expensive. We were extremely happy and we went into the history and we found out that this uh, building was belonged to, uh, uh, to a person, uh, Grigoris Vaslamatsis, who was the owner of the gazeuse factory, the, uh, you know what gazeuse is, the gazoz factory in Istanbul, Olympia Gazozu. Gazoza. Yeah. And uh, is that so? It comes from gas. Yeah, gas. Uh, and uh, Olympia was the, we also know that Olympia was the uh, wife of uh, Mr. Grigoris. And, you know, the, uh, I'm not wrong, I, I'm telling the story. <laughs> And, uh, and, you know, he, he was like uh, well known, a well-known person in Istanbul, and we knew that they had to leave also in 1957. Uh, we moved there, and very carefully we renovated the house. I never liked to pull down walls to make them larger or anything like that, because, you know, it is like uh, keeping something and keeping as it is, you know, it is very important for me. Uh, we went to renovation and we began to live. At 2000, you know, uh, at the year 2000, now they are with us and, you know, I really am celebrating this moment here together with them. Uh, I saw two people who are watching the house, you know, from behind me. I was uh, carrying some bags and things I felt something different, and I turned down, uh, back and I asked, uh, why are you watching the building? Why, what is this that makes you watch like this? And uh, Georgia told me that my husband was born in this house. So we are interested whether it is there or not. You know. Of course, at that moment, uh, a great friendship, you know, a great friendship started. We went inside and Mr. Grigoris looked around and, you know, actually he had his ring on his finger and he showed me that. And of course, the emblem on the door of our house was the same. So there was no way that he was the owner, you know. <laughs> So uh, at that moment, you know, everything started to happen, start to begin. And when Anna Kafetsi really gave me the chance, uh, that immediately uh, went out that, you know, I, I had this uh, idea pop up and, you know, it happened that I made this apartment building. It was like, uh, you know, those people who left never can come and have their houses again. We are now owning them, but we never do something to contribute to this moment that, you know, we never can give anything back. So it is, it is such a point that it is structured, you know, you cannot do anything else. But what I thought was making a maquette of the building at least, and bringing it to Athens and giving it to the museum was a good idea, and we created it together with Anna. So I think it is uh, one of the very important works of mine, and I really appreciate that those who have contributed to it. And, uh, and 
another contribution from the family was uh, that they gave their own photographs which were taken in this apartment. Uh, so it was a very valuable contribution to the, uh, to the uh, work which really was carrying a memory. So everything was there for me to build it up and bring the building right. here, you know. Well, I thank you as an Athenian. I thank you, I thank uh, Vasa Matsi's yeah, family, and I thank uh, Anna Kafetsi <laughs> for, for giving us this gift uh, as viewers. Yes, um, I'm very thankful. So uh, you're talking about memory and importance of memory, uh, <clears throat> which deals uh, to a, a large extent, I think, with uh, issues of, of um, uh, identity worth uh, in your work, uh, whether it is children, whether it is uh, minorities uh, uh, that have left uh, the city of Istanbul. You seem to be very attached to the memory of a city which was, um, I'm not saying international, but composed by uh, many different uh, cultures. Mm -hmm. It's not international the way London is, you know, fashion international. It was a city which was thriving because of uh, uh, the variety. Mm -hmm. of the population and what everyone brought to it. Um, so a number of your works deal mm -hmm. with identity issues and also liberating identity issues. And I'm talking specifically about the piece you made in Valencia, mm -hmm. um, which uh, is uh, 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 unconsolidated vision, it's called. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, I just have to look up the note. Uh, Uncastle Vision, and it is something <clears throat> that may look familiar to us in Athens. Uh, many of the terraces we see of the ancient neoclassical houses uh, are sculpted on the bottom for the passerby to have a visual event. And I find that absolutely civilized and wonderful and how my own private property does not is not only my private property, but becomes... Um, the pleasure of the others, even though they cannot come in. Uh, it's a conceptually fantastic approach uh, to architecture. Uh, you did a similar thing, though, with, but not with marble uh, sculpt sculpted uh, uh, motifs, uh, but you uh, dug into the community, uh, the marginal communities uh, of transsexuals uh, in, in Valencia, and printed photographs that were at the bottom, uh, at the bottom of, a, of a terraces. Uh, so it, it was a public artwork, but it was not so obvious, you had to look up, and giving um, uh, a right of life to people who, uh, up to a certain uh, years ago, uh, were kept completely on the march. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just gonna make a tiny digression again, mm -hmm. um, but it's connected to bringing you to Istanbul. Uh, there was, in the center of town of Istanbul, up to 99 and maybe 2002, uh, several uh, places were completely marginal. Uh, among them, one was called Henge, mm -hmm. uh, which, was a, uh, which was a place that opened at four in the morning uh, and uh, stayed on until s uh, 10 in the morning. And it basically was like a, a important uh, very central, relocated, uh, transsexual uh, locale mm -hmm. uh, for dance and all. It's all been cleaned out. Yes. Uh, anything uh, from um, uh, Alevi um, uh, cafes uh, where people drink and some you, everything has been cleaned out in the new, in the new Istanbul, which is radically different from the one you wrote. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, when I, at one point, when I saw these images of Valencia. Uh, I, uh, which is from 2002? No, when is, when is oh, the piece? Oh, uh, 2003. Sorry. 2003, yeah. which is roughly the same time when Athens was quote unquote cleaned out mm -hmm. by Erdogan. So I, I, imagine, uh, I imagine you doing this piece in Valencia with a thought about Istanbul and with a thought about, uh, yes, identitary politics, which is so important both in feminist terms in your work in children's uh, value and in uh, exploring all the sides of society. 
So I spoke too much. You, you, no, you have to add to uh, on the at contrary, least three times as much. I, I would like to thank you so much about this question because, you know, it is uh, right now I'm uh, at a point that, you know, uh, two weeks ago mm -hmm. I was invited by Ivan, uh, director, yes. to, uh, to uh, Valencia. And uh, it is a proposal for a solo exhibition in the museum. Uh, and I'm very happy about this because it's going to be a big uh, solo mm -hmm. also for me. And uh, of course, when I was there, you know, it was a very short visit. But of course, everything about this uh, uh, project, which I have done in 2003, uh, with uh, with uh, an exhibition uh, which I participated there by Rosa Martinez, mm -hmm. and uh, it came into question, of course, because you know, yes, I am going to put uh, some old works, new works, but in fact, there is a work which I have done in uh, in some time for for the in the history of Valencia, so they wanted me to rebuild the uh, project again. Of course, this is doubtful. How can I bring it back? Shall I shall I do uh, uh, something re uh, new? Or you know, I'm still thinking about this. But about this project, you know, this was uh, something that I have done after an older project that I have done in Istanbul. Because in 2000, uh, <coughs> in the end of uh, uh, 90s, there was uh, something, this clean up, cleaning up movement was there in Istanbul in a very harsh way, in an incredible way. Because uh, the transvestites and transsexuals, as well as in Jihangir, where we were living. Mm -hmm. When we moved to Jihangir, we were happy because, you know, our district down one, uh, you know, down the stairs, we were, the, the prostitutes were living and all the transsexuals, transsexuals, we, we were surrounded with this lively mm -hmm. lifestyle and that was the most important thing for a city that you live with all these uh, people together and still enjoy life. Uh, but uh, then uh, the police began to shoot them out of uh, the center because the gentrification began. And with this gentrification, they were really uh, following and shooting people, uh, transvestites and transsexuals, uh, from their homes, from their streets, and everywhere. I was very, uh, you know, uh, touched by this uh, po po position because, you know, uh, at the same time there were two uh, TV programs. One was a drag queen show, which we really uh, watched, you know, the whole nation was watching it every night and we were really laughing, having fun and so on. Uh, and a guy who is very uh, nice, you know, actually making jokes about transsexualism and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was a show. And another drag queen, uh, Bülent Ersoy, a transvestite singer, had another show at the same time. And one night there was the drag queen show. The other night there was the transsexual uh, singer's show. But at the same time, every night, they were really uh, chasing the transsexuals and transvestites from the seduction, such a hypocrisy and such a bad feeling. So I made one project in Zurich, mm -hmm. uh, which was totally about that, uh, which was talking about the history of transsexual and transvestite history of Istanbul, going back to the history, but you know, basing this hypocrisy over it, so it was one project that I did. When I was invited to Valencia, I wanted to do the other part of this project. And I started to, uh, to find out about this. Actually, why I, Valencia was interesting for that? Uh, because Valencia was the cheapest city by then 
in uh, the whole Spain, and all those transvestites, transsexuals, gays, and mm -hmm. everyone was settling down in Valencia because it was mm -hmm. a cheap city. Mm -hmm. So uh, I said this could be an interesting bondage between Istanbul and there, mm -hmm. and I have a space in Valencia, nearby Valencia, in an old uh, Roman theater which had uh, balconies and I was fascinated about the Sp Spanish balconies so that I thought it would be a good idea to use the balconies of this old an ancient Roman theater. So why not invite the Valencia transvestites and transsexuals and <coughs> Istanbul Mm -hmm. uh, groups uh, to contribute to, the, to this project. I opened up my space for them, asked many groups, you know, I went to those uh, clubs and places, mm -hmm. you know, talked with them, and also someone helped me in Valencia to find photographs and things mm -hmm. like that. They, we first talked with them and whether they would like to mm -hmm. put something mm -hmm. over there. And in the end, you know, they really happily wanted to share the project. They gave, gave me their pictures. Mm -hmm. I enlarged them and I placed them mm -hmm. under the balconies like the decorations of the uh, Spanish houses. And they were there. So this, how, this is how the unconsolidated yeah. visions came uh, into life. Fr from pictures to pictures, uh, yeah. because I, I would like to get closer to the wonderful exhibition you have in Nitra Gallery, which um, if I, I don't want to correct uh, Aliki, but she forgot to say the address, which, which is uh, 34 Ypsilanto. Uh, 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 so for, for people to know, uh, the ones who haven't been to her gallery yet. But anyway, uh, in her gallery, you will see maybe two or three sets of works. Um, and uh, one is a series of collages uh, made from photographs, um, which uh, in a very different way, I find very similar to um, the, the collages of uh, um, uh, on, um, Unlimited uh, Vision, uh, which is, <coughs> uh, she's taken, um, contact sheets, very small contact sheets, uh, three by four centimeters, and enlarge them. Um, uh, contact sheets she had bought, she found in the street, maybe from her family, I don't really know, but once they are enlarged, photographed and enlarged, the, the people are no longer the individuals, but they become every man, exactly as um, the photographs of a community of transvestite and sexuals in in, um, um, in Valencia are not just individuals, but they are, uh, again, uh, a person, an individual who stands for all of us. And uh, in uh, these beautiful collages, you will see, uh, there are many elements about which we talked now uh, in a mass way. Uh, there are the identity issue, the fact that a person can become symbolic of a whole category of people, if not of, a, of all humanity. There is the issue of memory, which is uh, represented by what appears to be uh, samples of old wallpaper mm -hmm. uh, that is a background of individual. And then there is uh, an issue which we haven't really mentioned, but it, it was always um, uh, hovering, which is the issue of uh, uh, emotion and melancholy, uh, mm -hmm. and um, which is, you will see, uh, uh, declared by a black band, like the band of mourning that people wear when somebody dies. Uh, they're very sensitive uh, work that somehow, even though very small, they contain uh, three huge elements of a work. Uh, but uh, I've just taken care of one thing, but there are two or three other typologies of work in the exhibition. And um, one deals with uh, memory of objects, uh, bibelot, 
uh, and uh, uh, alphabets that one cannot understand. These are sculptural pieces with found objects that she often uses. And then there are paintings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like you to talk about the paintings because these paintings are called uh, promise paintings. Promise, yeah. uh, but you actually started out as a painter in some mm -hmm. way, and you mm -hmm. had done a number of paintings which uh, uh, dealt with uh, prisons. Yeah. So can you please tell us about your painting practice yes. and about uh, uh, the paintings that one, you will see in real life uh, with the collages and the mm -hmm. sculptures with the bibelot mm -hmm. when you see the Nitragari. Yeah. Yeah, I, I graduated from uh, Istanbul Fine Arts Academy uh, as a painter. Uh, well, uh, uh, I kept, I keep this feeling forever, you know, when you are a painter, you are a painter forever, you know, whether you become the contemporary or whatever, you know, it's inside you, you know, you never leave it. Um, but I might say that I have never been interested in this Pantouf, or you know uh, what they what they uh, harshly try to teach us the abstract painting or something like that. I was very interested in the painting which depicted the human human life. I was very interested in those uh, church paintings, icons, you know. <coughs> The pre-Renaissance paintings in those Italian churches mm -hmm. and things like that, Piero della Francesca's, Giotto's, and things like that. I don't know how I found the trace of it and I, I hold of it, but you know, uh, it was impossible to uh, make it uh, understandable for the time uh, that I was living in Turkey with the uh, academy, that I, I really think that these are paintings, you know. So I chose another way. I began to make paintings which really uh, was talking about life, you know. But I was totally accused, of course, by the academy, by my friends and everyone, my, my teachers, that I was doing the illustrations. You know, uh, everyone was accused of making illustrations. The art when police you, only. Yeah. Huh? Only the art police yeah. accused you, not yeah. the other ones. And uh, so I chose to do that without caring about anything, you know, because I had the chance of going and seeing Italy with, with all this rich mm -hmm. encounter, you know, I, I couldn't do anything else. And I began to do the uh, paintings which talk about something, which tell stories. <laughs> Uh, I had uh, an experience with prison uh, in uh, 1971, and after that, of course, it was not possible to, to do something inside the prison, inside the space, but later when I went out, uh, yeah, I just chose to make some paintings to keep the memory with me, but those paintings I never uh, investigated in them. Uh, in a way, I felt uh, I would abuse the uh, situation with, the, with showing the prison paintings or something like that. I put them in a, in a dossier and put it away. But after 40 years, you know, someone saw them <coughs> and they showed it in my salt exhibition, which was a, a solo show, a big show with all my works. So then they came to life. And coming to the uh, promised paintings, mm -hmm. uh, I was eagerly willing to do the uh, painting again and again, but I was involved in, in, uh, in contemporary art. And you know, in the beginning of 90s, well, you, you are doing the contemporary mm -hmm. art, you know, installations and things like that. Painting was again a taboo, you know, yeah, as it taboo. is in the, in the 70s. Yes, it is illustration what you do, hmm, it's not important. Eh? And if you do painting, yeah, hmm, painting is nothing because contemporary art is this and that, it's going on. And I said, you know, I should find a way for myself, I should do paintings. 
Uh, well, actually, then I felt that while I am living in a city like Istanbul, what is Istanbul for me? Istanbul is a, an icon for me. Everywhere around me, I can, I can translate as an icon. So why not be an icon maker yourself? So I started these kinds of paintings as a project, you know, as a contemporary art project. Uh, and I said, I'm beginning to make icons. Yes, these are, you know, uh, actually something different because I put myself into the position of an icon maker. Who is icon maker? He takes the commission from above and he's only a hand. So I'm not very responsible with what I do. But that was a wonderful game because, you know, I started to do uh, icons with, without any, uh, you know, of course these, are, these icons have no religion, nothing underneath, but these are actually the, uh, the thing that comes to me and I produce these. And I never take it very seriously. I start to do it and something comes out and that's it. You know, I, I was using hands showing each other and then hands became the orator's hands and then now I have the, you will see in the gallery, I have the feet and everything together. So it's continuing and it will continue forever uh, as much as I can do. So I love to do that, you know. So that's it. Okay. I, I've had the infinite pleasure of asking questions myself, all for myself, but maybe uh, the public uh, will share this pleasure and will ask um, something uh, that uh, maybe you know you saw in the in the loop. Uh, Actually, if I may, yes, uh, I think Do. what interests a lot of people is the fact that you are somehow associated very much with the relationship between Turkey and Greece, at Istanbul mm -hmm. and Athens. I mean, if you take it um, on a level of cities. Um, and of course, that is very much explained by the way you grew up. And I mean, I'm from Thessaloniki, so the way you speak about Istanbul back then is very similar to what we've known about Thessaloniki in the beginning of the 20th mm -hmm. century. So somehow can relate to that. Would you like to to tell us a bit more about how you perceive the city of Athens in its contemporary form? Um. Well, uh, with the city of Athens, actually, I have relationship since, you know, with the contemporary scene, since 2006, when I was invited to a uh, Grand Promenade exhibition. Well, this was an enchanting uh, encounter with, for me, because uh, for the first time, uh, with that exhibition, I found out the city itself, as well as the contemporary, how it was disposed in it, you know. So that gave me uh, the possibility of meeting the artist from the city, as well as the contemporary, which I have been connected, doing my work uh, internationally. And this exhibition really brought something into the city in a way that it was very exciting uh, and also uh, not being in one space and in one point uh, as it was uh, merging with the city itself, it was extremely interesting for me. By that time, actually in Istanbul, there was something going on with the Biennales, you know, which was also very exciting, you know, and uh, in my mind, I had the possibility of connecting them together and uh, seeing that there are many possibilities that those two cities can bring together. And uh, yeah, the second one, um, actually the, my experience was the, again, with Emst, uh, and then I was invited to Saloniki Biennale. Thank you so much, Paolo. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for the opportunity. Paolo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.